The legend of King Arthur is one of the most enduring myths of the Western world. With tales of adventure, magic and romance, it's captivated the hearts of generations. He's told the so of the stars. It's inspired countless retellings, defined national identities and become the ideal of leaders around the globe. But the fact is, to this day, nobody really knows where the history ends and the poetry begins. I'm Colin Morgan, and that's Bradley James, though you may know us better as Merlin and Arthur. For eight months of the year, we film our drama series in a studio in Cardiff. But when we finished this year, we decided to embark on a 300-mile road trip across parts of the country we've never seen, so that we could explore the Welsh connection to the myth. Along the way, we met some interesting people, saw some interesting sights, and we did some odd things in the dark. Yes, well, and we did it all to get closer to the real Merlin and Arthur. It's the first morning of our three-day journey of Arthurian discovery. The plan is to see as many Welsh sites as we can that are associated with the legend of the once and future king. Oh, and also that other bloke, Merlin or whatever he's called. Oi, watch it. Yes, that's right. Over the next 72 hours, we are traveling far and wide, talking to the people in the know and trying to find out whether there ever was an Arthur and Merlin. I imagine Colin's already ready. Uh, downstairs, checking out what we're going to be doing for the day. You know, any book that with you know, Arthurian legend, Arthur Merlin, Knights of the Rhine Tale, anything with that in the t title, he's, he's, you know, picking it up and reading it. I'm very excited about it. Um, I, think, I think it's going to be good fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to actually getting some grounding and seeing and getting some solid facts as such, even though it is legend and myth. But, but, um, but yeah, getting some exact details about it all, it'll be, it will be good to sort of, I guess, either enlighten me or reconfirm some stuff that I've already learned. I have nowhere near uh, as much information in my head about the Arthurian legends as Professor Morgan does, to my shame. Um, but I'm sure he'll be able to teach me a thing or two. The age-old problem with the Arthurian legend is working out where the facts end and the literature begins. Arthur is a 6th century hero, but the romantic stories we know and love about him today didn't appear until hundreds of years later. Thomas Malory's Le Mort d'Arthur, published in the late 1400s, is perhaps the best known Arthurian romance. In it, the mighty Excalibur smites all Arthur's mortal foes. Yeah and Merlin battles his magical ones. The Knights of the Round Table are paragons of virtue, the best in the land. Gawain the Brave, Galahad the Pure, Lancelot the Great. And to this day, the ultimate quest for the Cup of Christ has become legendary. Time to get this show on the road and find out where legend meets fact. First stop off is a place called Mould, mm. which is where the largest collection of Arthurian and medieval texts in Wales is so. Um, Someone's done the research. Yeah. <laughs> so it can't be that far away. It was on the other. It was on the <laughs> other side. <laughs> Mold. Hey. It's miles away. It's the length of Wales we've got to travel. We're in. We're in Cardiff, which is on the coast of Wales, the south coast. Mould is pretty much on the north coast of Wales, near Chester. So, our quest to visit Arthurian Wales is well underway. And over the next three days, we are going to drive... Hang on. You haven't got a licence. All right. You're going to drive all over the country and see some of the sites associated with the legend of King Arthur and Merlin. And as we travel, we'll be talking to Arthurian authorities to get their take on whether the once and future king and his wise wizard ever existed. Today, we are leaving Cardiff and travelling 150 miles north to Mould, where we have an appointment to visit the Flintshire Library headquarters. It's home to the world's leading collection of Arthurian texts. Housed in here is everything we'll ever need to know. And this is who will be waiting to meet us, author and historian Scott Lloyd. I've been studying the Arthurian legend for about 15 years now uh, and I've spent 
an unhealthy amount of time in this room over the years. Um, certainly 10 years ago I was in here a lot uh, doing research for the, for the first thing I wrote and then uh, ever since then I've been backwards and forwards because it's such, such a wonderful resource. Currently the, there's two and a half thousand volumes in here, uh, all dedicated to the Arthurian legend. It's an excellent starting place because everything you need is in one room. So when you come across a reference to another book, you turn around and it's there on the shelf. Uh, so very quickly you can go through your research. This is open Monday to Friday, 9 till 5, um, it's open to the public. Anyone can come and use it. And it's just, like I say, it's a brilliant resource. Mm. Open until 5, you say. I have a feeling that our leisurely drive might make us a little late for that library booking. Yeah, and not to mention the time it's taken to get these lovely camera shots. This is actually turning out to be quite a lengthy drive, uh, certainly a lot longer than we anticipated. And um, we find ourselves in the middle of nowhere on our way, on our way north. Um, I don't know how far or close we are to uh, where we're going, but um, hopefully we'll get there soon. It is taking a bit longer, but I've decided to take more of a scenic route, so we're actually getting to see some parts that we, you know, we've never seen before, which is great. Our various scenic stops means that back in the library, Scott is being kept waiting. Well, at least he's not short of reading material. I'd be gutted if we don't get to see this library. Like, I mean. That sounds like a really nerdy thing to say, but... Don't worry, Scott. We're coming. We'll get there. Not on time, but... <laughs> We've spent five hours behind the wheel. Yeah, most of those behind slow-moving vehicles. But, finally, we've reached a very cold mold. And by the looks of it, a very cold Scott. Here we are. Scott does not look happy. Bradley. Nice to meet you. Colin. Nice yeah. to meet you. Here's the reason why we're late. Uh, yeah, sorry. Is there any chance we can still get in? <sighs> sorry, no, there's nothing I can do about it. It closes at five. Not even five minutes? No, it's locked. There's nothing I can do. So what, what, what have we actually missed out on? What, what, what is inside? Best collection of Arthurian books in the world in one room. 2,000 <laughs> volumes all on the subject. Children's books, academic books, books on Arthur, books on Merlin. Everything, really. You're right. Yeah, yeah, basically. You really... missed everything. <laughs> So here's what we've learned so far in our Arthurian road trip. If you're travelling from Cardiff to Mould, set off early. Seeing as we weren't in time to actually read any of the texts for ourselves, we've taken Scott to the only place that's open around here, the Clude Theatre Cymru. Well, we are both actors. It seems quite appropriate, really. Here we've been picking his medieval mind on all things Arthur and Merlin. So with all this general um, appeal of the Arthurian legend, what first draw you to it? Well, one of the main reasons I got drawn to it was that living locally in North Wales, I was aware of the legends and places associated with them in North Wales, but as you found, reading the standard works, I never found that much about it. They were very rarely mentioned. Yeah. So this piqued my interest. I'm very fortunate to have the Arthurian collection that you didn't get to see. <laughs> and in there, there was all these works and all these different things I could use. And that really where my interest did start, was why aren't these local names mentioned in Arthurian works? So that's where I started from, and that's why, all this time later, I've uh, been writing works on the Welsh topography of Arthur. How did it all originate? Where did it all come from? Would you say there was a more prominent period of time where the sort of Arthurian legends are set? Well, you've got two strands to the Arthurian legend, really. You've got the supposed historical Arthur, who's situated in the 6th century, and then we have the more of the literary Arthur, uh, which is what most people are familiar with. So that sort of starts to appear again in the 12th century and in the early 13th century. Mm. We have all the French romances where Merlin plays a more major role. And of course the French romances were then picked up by Thomas Mallory in his Le Mort d'Arthur in 1485. And that sort of standardised the whole legend, if you like. From that point on, the legend had a sort of standard form and that's the one that most people are familiar with. Is there any solid evidence at all to suggest that there's a real Arthur? But there may have been some character who, and somebody called Arthur who was in people's consciousness, but we really don't have enough evidence to pin it down. Right. I mean, the earliest solid thing we have that we can date securely is the Historia Britonum written in the 9th century. 